What what do you guys see? Like, feel free to just shout out some words. What do you see? I see that he's helping an injured lamb. Okay, he's helping, he's carrying. All right, anybody else? No? Someone getting saved. Someone getting saved. That's right. It doesn't it say that he leaves the 99 to get the one. So he found the one, it looks like. Um, you know what I see? I see, I see us. We're the sheep. You know, it says that he's the good shepherd. And actually, I think I wrote that down here. Let me go. So, so let me just tell you what I see. I see, I see trust. Right? I see trust. I mean, I mean, look at the lambs around the, the sheep around him. They they are with this shepherd and they're close to him and they they're safe with him. They trust him. And and especially the dude on top, right? He's just like, where are we going? You know, he's he trusts. And and another word that came to mind was was freedom. You know, because they're you know, we, we were created for God. Right? We were we weren't created to have our own lives, to live it the way we think, you know, to be worldly and to chase things that are temporal. You know, we were created for an eternal destiny. To be with God forever in heaven, right? That's our destiny. And so when we're when we're with who we were created to be with, there's freedom there. <laughs> Amen. When we trust Him to carry us, to show us the way, right? This series, we're we're walking in the Spirit. We're the, the group is we are the revival, right? Generation next, we are raising up spiritual warriors. You know, and the way that we do that. Is we follow the king. We follow the good shepherd. Amen? Amen. Alright, let's see. My sheep, here, this is John 10, 27 through 30. My sheep hear my voice. <laughs> and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. What an amazing promise. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. You guys, if you're here tonight, it's because God wants you to belong to Him. Amen. And if you give yourself to Him, if you trust Him with all of your heart, it says, uh, and they never will perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of His hand. No one can take us from Him. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. So that's, you know, that's who we are. If you're here tonight, if, you're, if, you, if you need the, the Father's love, if you, need the, if you need Jesus to come in and be your shepherd, like he wants to, he died for that privilege to be your Lord and your good shepherd. So, so it's okay to let him in. You know, I know sometimes we, we believe lies. You know, the enemy likes to convince us that we're not good enough or we're losers or our families deserve better. Or we suck at our jobs, or whatever the whatever the lie that the enemy is convincing you to believe, that's not true. The truth is that you, that Jesus died for you to be your good shepherd, so that you can trust Him and find freedom from all that crap in Him. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. So what I want to get into, because I want to try to be like practical about walking in the Spirit. You know, if we're going to be spiritual warriors, you know, we have to kind of how do we do that? You know what I mean? Like, so I want to use Jesus as the example. Because what better example of how to do that than Jesus? <laughs> Amen. So the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. So he just got baptized, and uh, the dove came down, the Holy Spirit, and, and, and there was a voice from heaven, and this is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. So that's who he is. He's God's beloved Son, who he's well pleased with. And then immediately, it says the, dro the, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. So this is significant because this is how we walk in the Spirit. This is how we live our lives and do battle with the enemy, right? And I want to caution, I want to give you guys a caution here. Because I think, some, I, me personally, I've gotten, you know, this in times in the past, and again, this is just a lie from the enemy. That once you come to Christ, life is just going to be easy. Life is just going to become rainbows and butterflies, and you're going to walk on clouds, and everything you want to have happen is just going to happen effortlessly. Okay? But the reality is that, that we are in a spiritual battle, which is why we need to identify ourselves as spiritual warriors. But we aren't alone in this fight. Right? So the Holy Spirit, 
once you're born again and you become a new creation, you get a new spirit. And your spirit is identical with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is, is what drives us. It's what guides us and leads us through life. And it will at times, just like the Holy Spirit did here with Jesus, it will drive us into the wilderness. Okay? And he was in the wilderness for 40 days being tempted by Satan. So, yeah, that's going to happen. Okay? So just, that's what this is about. That's what this group is about. You know, it's about getting prepared. It's about coming together. It says to not forsake the assembling together of yourself. It says in, uh, I had it written down in Hebrews, it says that we must gather and we must continue to just encourage each other and warn each other. And that's really why we come together. When there are two or three gathered there in the midst, the Holy Spirit is here tonight. And he wants you guys to be ready. You know, my brother David, we all, you know, we spend more and more time together. And we both we both love Jesus. I mean, and we're here because we want you guys to understand the love of Jesus. And uh, he shared with me, you know, that three people since he started this group have passed away. From like drug overdose and attempted suicides. I mean, like, you know, so that broke my heart because the enemy is is accusing us day and night before our God. It says in Revelation 12:10. Um, but we defeated with the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So, Amen. yeah, so so he can be, he, he is defeated. You know, Christ hung on that cross and said, it's been taken in one of my slides. But I um, uh, just want you guys to uh, to get what I'm saying. You know, I want you to understand that we are in a battle, that even Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. So, so the battle is real. The battle is real. And Jesus said, it's better that I go so that I can send the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit's going to protect us. The Spirit is going is to keep us. We're going to be able to trust in the Spirit. We're going to be able to have freedom. And all of the things that Jesus paid for on the cross are going to be available to us through the Spirit. So we have to yield our heart. We have to surrender. We have to trust with all of our heart. And the Spirit will lead us. But it's the Spirit of Jesus in us that has already defeated the enemy. He's already defeated him. He, was, he said it's finished on the cross. So when we go and we're struggling, we, that enemy comes, he starts lying to us. He starts telling us, oh yeah, you heard Mickey say the other night that you're his sheep and he's your shepherd, he's your good shepherd and he'll keep you safe and, and you can trust him and you have freedom. But but what about, you know, whatever, whatever your struggle is, but he knows you better than you, you know, we know ourselves. The enemy is just constantly trying to attack. But in those moments, okay, this is the most spiritual thing you guys can do is choose. Okay, you can, you can choose to believe what's being said here. And you, or you can choose not to believe. Okay? And there's two things that happen when you choose. You lean towards something and you lean away from something. So choose to believe the truth about who you are in the Spirit. And you will start to experience God's freedom. That He paid a steep price for you to have. Um, Alright, what do we have? Let's go through my slide thing. Okay. Alright, so this is another moment that I wanted to share with you guys. Because again, Jesus is our example. You know, so so okay, Mickey. I hear what you're saying. The spirit's gonna, the spirit's gonna lead me into temptation. The moments where there's gonna be temptation, he's gonna lead me out into the wilderness. He's gonna lead me in in, in through this life where there's gonna be struggles and, and and trials. Okay. Now now look at our Lord Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, right before they came to get him, where he was about to be brutally. <laughs> they, you know, if you guys have ever seen the Passion. I mean, brutally, they say he was marred beyond recognition. They whipped him with these lashes that had like bones. And they would rip and tear into his flesh and they would pull it away and it would tear his flesh out. You know, I mean, and then they nailed him to that cross. I mean, after he had to carry it up, you know. I mean, he struggled to, to pay for what we have available to us. <laughs> this peace and love and grace. It's all available if you believe, if you choose to believe. But let me just read this. So Matthew 26, 39 and 42. Oh, my father is crying. What's he doing, guys? He's crying out to God. He's crying out to Abba Father. If it is possible, <laughs> let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. You know, and I'm going, I'm getting, I'm getting ready to speak uh, next Tuesday at something else. Um, and we're going to Acts 9. And it talks about Saul and how he was blinded and how he responded to Jesus in that moment. Like, all right, Lord, like, what's this about? And then you have Ananias, who also 
has a vision from Jesus that tells him to go and visit Saul to give him the sight back. And, and Ananias' response was, wait a minute, are you sure about this, this dude Saul? Like, he's like trying to kill people, like trying to kill Christians. Like, you sure that the dude won't be? So what I'm saying is like, he even, even Jesus had this, this, this moment of like, wait a minute, like, you want me to do this? Okay, you know? And this, I'm, I want to use that as an example for you guys. Okay, I want this to come, because I want you to take this word, take it in through your brains and down and let it get into your heart. And as you're living your life, because all of the things of life come out from the heart. There's a verse for that. I don't have a number, but it's in there. Read your Bibles. Read your Bibles. That's God's living word that he gave us, that we can spend time with him. The more time you spend with God and his word, the more you'll be able to hear his voice. Okay? And, um... I don't know where I was going with that. So I'm just, oh, see, I'm, I'm not prepared. I'm trying to get better and better. The Lord said that this is kind of like He's training me and David and all of us how to how to do this thing. Okay, so um, that's a white slide. No, that's my video. Okay, I'll go back. All right. Anyway, um, let me pull out some of these scriptures real quick. So, um, you guys follow me? You guys good? Yeah. Okay. Come on, give me something here, right? I need some, I need to know you guys. Because, because I, like I said, I'm up here because God wants you guys to get this stuff. He wants you to see our Lord and Savior in the middle of his hard, hard times, right? And what, and how he was able to be led by the Spirit and walk in the Spirit and, and have, and continue to have faith in the midst of trials and tribulations and struggles and still obey. Okay? And he still obey. And that's what he's calling us to do. So let us, okay, so, so when he said it's finished, right, he defeated the enemy. I love this verse, it's Hebrews 4, 11. It says, so let us do our best. So really, the only thing we have to do, here, I'm going to just, I'm going to, I'm just going to let scripture preach, okay, because Mickey's not doing too good tonight. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, I guess I can share this story real quick, and then I'll get into this one. So. Okay, this is, um, so the other day, I was, uh, I was at my house, and um, you need to let me know about time, bro, because I don't know what time. Um, the other day I was at my house and I look outside and it's raining and I like to go running, you know, and if you've ever, if you're a runner, you know, it's like, it's really nice when it's hot and you run in the rain, it feels great. So I'm like, I'm about to go run in the rain. So I get my stuff on and I get outside and the clouds have already passed by and I'm like, oh man, I miss the clouds. Uh, but I still see them. They're still like close by. So I'm like, I'm about to just catch up with the clouds. So I take off running and I get caught up to the clouds and sure enough, I get hit with the rain and I'm like, yes. And I'm running along and I'm, and I'm listening to worship music and I'm just like praising God. And then, he's, and then he gives me this, this image, right? This whatever, vision or whatever. And basically it's, it's Mickey, this is, what, this is what I want you to do in the spirit. Okay, because and this is something I shared with David earlier today. You know, it's one thing to come here to try to, to, try to get you where you need to be. But, but that's not where the buck stops. Okay, he wants us to get right with him so that he can use us to help other people get right with him. Okay, so what does that look like? In the spirit, we need to have spiritual eyes when we're looking for that storm. You know, when we're walking by people, people are struggling. People are being attacked by the enemy. And they're, and they're, and they're believing the lie. And, and God is using us to be the light of the world. To, to walk by people and look at them in their eye. And, and say, ask the Lord, does this person need, to need some of your light right now? Because we are vessels of the light of heaven, right? We are the light on the earth. And that's what running into the storm is all about. And that's what he spoke to. He said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to just go outside into the world, and I want you to look, and I want you to just look at the landscape and look where the storms are. Look where the battles are. And that's where I want you. That's where you need to be as a spiritual warrior. You need, that. You need to look for that. But how can you ever do that unless you guys understand your relationship with him? And what he what he's calling you into, he's calling you into to, to set people free, to, to heal the brokenhearted, to, to, to set the uh, oppressed at liberty, because they believe lies, and those lies are shackles, and they just hold people down, and they keep them in their addictions, and they keep them in their suffering, you know. But he wants us to come. He actually gave me another vision later on as I was coming back home that same on that same run. And I shared it on Facebook, so if you guys aren't with the Generation Next Facebook group, I highly recommend, because I pop on there during the week when the Lord gives me stuff, and I just share it. And one of them was like, the warden of a prison is, is, is Satan. 
and the, the, the prison guards are his demonic angels, right? the demons, and, and the people are in their cells suffering as prisoners, and the, the demons who are the prison guards are constantly trying to get them to, to believe that they are prisoners. You are no good criminal prisoner, and you need to suffer because of how bad you are. And the warden is up there like, yep, that's right. But you know what? Jesus came into that prison and said, it's a lie. It's all a lie. Amen. And, and those of us who believe the truth get set free and we become free men inside the prison, which is we're in this fallen body on this, in this fallen world. But we, when we got saved, we didn't get zapped in the head. Okay, he left us here because he wants us to tell other people the truth about who they are. So we're walking around in this prison, this temporary life we have. And our job as spiritual warriors, as free men, as, as children of God, of children, citizens of heaven, to be ambassadors of Christ and say, hey, prisoner in your cell, grab on. Come on out of there. Let me tell you about who you really are. And then when they get set free, then what do you think that God wants them to do? He wants them to go and find people that are trapped and get them out. And that's why we're still here. He, you know, he wants to build the, the church who is his bride because there's going to be an amazing a celebration uh, in heaven. So the only thing we really have to do, the only choice we really have to make is first and foremost, believe the truth. Right? But it says right here, so let us do our best to enter that mess. So all the work is that Jesus did is finished. He, he took care of the devil so we can step into that identity but we have to choose to believe that. That's the only effort we need to exert. And so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. I'm just going to keep reading, so tell me when I need to stop. You, because I don't know what my time is. You must, warn, you must warn each other every day while it's still today, so that none of you will be deceived by sin and hard against God. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do. So this is what we're doing. But encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. For the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes each one he accepts as his children. So, yeah. So, so guys, just, just, I just hope that the truth, the word of God is powerful. When it goes out, it doesn't return void. And I believe that tonight.